Just getting the PKTX set up for a little bit of brisket cooking tonight. Got this flat from the uh, from the butchers. So what we're going to do is just going to lay all the coal out, buried some oak splits in there, and I'm going to dump a quarter of chim chimney straight on top. And uh, this is the minion method. I don't really see people using this that much anymore. So yeah, sprinkle the coals all across, gradually burns down through the day. And then I'll show you how we set up the grill grates to put a big slab of meat like that on as well. So it should be, uh, it should be pretty easy. So there we go. Just scattered the coals across the, uh, the top of the unlit coals. Running master built lump with charcoal today. It's a really nice um, smoky charcoal made from post oak and pecan and such like. Got the Cookmore grill on top, a water pan underneath. I'm just gonna lay the brisket on the top there, shut the lid and that should be good all day. Um, I don't know if we'll, we'll probably have to wrap this. It's a little bit lean because it's a UK brisket. Um, probably wrap it with a bit of moisture. I've left my beef tallow at home, so I'm gonna have to come up with a different plan for what we wrap it in. But yeah, we'll see what sort of color we get on it. Could do with getting this done in six hours today. So I'll just put that on and uh, fill the water pan with a bit of warm water and off we go. PKTX, our red one. It's done a lot of service, this one. Keeps on going. We've got a few of these left in stock now. They've been discontinued by PK, which is uh, a little bit of a shame. So they're a bit of a collector's item now. So after this batch, that is it. We've got red, silver, graphite. Um, so yeah. Drop us a line if you want one of these bad boys for the summer. And um, yeah, great bits of kit. This is probably my favorite PK of all of them. Legendary, this one. This is the original capsule. So I'll talk more about that later. Vents are gonna be about halfway open on the top, fully open on the bottom. And we'll see how we go. Going for about half an hour, we're up to temp. It's about 225 in there. Bottom vents fully open, top vents. Mm, a quarter maybe a little bit more a third these TX's I mean all the PK's they lock in really sort of easily I always like to leave bottom vents open when I've got big chunks of wood in there like that um, and do all the heat regulation with the top vent I find that works best on on pretty much everything that I use um, so yeah clean blue smoke with those nice big chunks of oak in there um, <clears throat> This temperature gauge is just coming up to up to speed. Running it all through the meter block. Those meters, these are really good, these meters. I can be across at the other, other building and still be monitoring the temp. But I won't need to do anything with this for, well, all day probably now. There's a, quite a bit of charcoal in there. It's not crazy cold today. It's about nine degrees. So yeah, I'll sort of take you along, see how we go. I've got no idea. I haven't cooked a flat, particularly a UK flat for, quite a while to be honest just want to try and get some color on it um it's seasoned in the franklin brisket rub i would have put his barbecue spice rub on it as well but i didn't have any at home at the time um it see i seasoned it last night so it's given it all night to really really lock in um water pan in there i'm probably not even gonna look at this for at least three hours we're just gonna let it tick away we'll see what the temps are doing um on the internal temps but i think i am gonna have to wrap it in some foil with a bit of um, with a bit of liquid. I like to make beef tallow from the trimmings while I'm cooking, but <laughs> left that at home. So we'll just kind of wing it, see how we go, give it a nice big rest at the end, then it should should slice up all right. But yeah, it's not um, it's not like going to be a super complicated Texas style brisket. I wouldn't have thought. <clears throat> the trim is just how it came out of the butchers. I just took a few of the hard bits off of it. Um, the butcher actually gave me a full pack of brisket, but. <laughs> It looked, uh, looked like it had been hacked about a bit, so I just salvaged the flat and then the point I'm gonna make uh, make a chili with at some point. So yeah, PKTX locked in, clean boot, blue smoke, and we shall see how we go. So we're about two and a half hours in. PK's been locked in to a steady 250 Fahrenheit. Let's have a look. Yeah, looking all good so far. Not a lot of charcoal used at the minute. So we'll just keep on, keep on going with this one. Okay, about four hours in, just past the stall. 
and the brisket is looking pretty good. I think we're going to keep on going, build a bit more colour. Um, we've still got about half the charcoal left. Okay, we've just hit the six hour mark. Let me have a check. I sprinkled some of this on there earlier. This is a really good rub for all things beef. So six hour mark and we went unwrapped all the way. And this is looking good. Just gonna have a quick probe. Um, I went unwrapped all the way. Oh, which isn't normally a great idea for UK grass fed, but this is feeling like it's really rendering down well. Where are we out there? 183. Hmm, the, um, oh, that bit's soft. Oh, 205, right. What I'm gonna do is gonna, we're gonna just switch this round, just so we can even up this end piece here. But I'm gonna wrap this in a minute and put it on for a really long rest. So I'll just put the phone down and spin this round quick. So we went, yeah, unwrapped all, all day, sort of just trying the, uh, the Goldie's method. So unwrapped all the way um, and wrap it up to rest, but rest it for a very long time. So I'm gonna rest it for about four or five hours. PK ran like a champ. We still got loads of fuel in there at the moment. Um, it's getting a bit wild because I've got the top open. So shut that back down. I've really had to choke the vents back when I leave it open for those long periods of time. But yeah, the PK TX runs like a dream. Um, running a water bath in there was a really good idea because that did run dry and my temp spiked quite a lot. So good tip, obviously small barbecues, run a water pan, it, it does create a load of moisture in there. Gives you loads of good bark um, on the food when you've got a high moisture environment. So yeah, pleased with that. Seems to be really tender. And for UK grass fed, that is looking like a win, but we won't speak too soon because we know what brisket's like. Something may go wrong still. Um, but yeah, I'll check back in with you guys once it's rested and we're slicing later. So after a four hour hot hold in the oven, this is looking pretty good. You can see that the um, the bark is, is has gone really dark on it. I mean, there was quite a lot of juice that came out of the foil when I unwrapped it. But as for a, um, a non-offset brisket on a, um, a PK grill with just oak wood splits, that's really nice, really impressive. I'll, uh, I'll cut into it and we'll, we'll see what the, uh, the slices came out like. There we have it. So yeah, all sliced up, really good, really good moisture. I mean, it could have been improved, I think, on the moisture front if I'd had the tallow to wrap it in, but otherwise that's, um, that's really nice. We'll be trying that again. It's been a while since I've cooked the brisket, but that was a that was a Herefordshire brisket. Pretty good fat content. Um, everything rendered pretty nice. If you're wondering what the hole is in there, that's just where the uh, the thermometer was. But yeah, pretty pleased with that, and we'll uh, we'll have some more briskets on the uh, on the way.